coping skills, I found out, were self-taught by many of these firefighters. So education from an organizational standpoint is important for firefighters in the future. And there is definitely a parallel between COVID-19 and what firefighters will continue to face in their profession. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to COVID-19 Heroes. I'm your host, Lorraine Schneider, and today I'm joined by retired LA firefighter, Glenn Miyagishima. After spending 33 years with LAFD, Glenn pursued a doctorate in education from the University of Southern California, studying stress in the fire service. A lot of his findings and experiences transfer well into the COVID-19 pandemic and what frontline workers and others may be experiencing. So today, we talk about the role of fire departments amid the coronavirus and share tips on how employers and employees can cope with stress. Hi, Glenn. Thank you for being on today's show of COVID-19 Heroes. Welcome. Good to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Glenn, how are fire departments adapting to COVID-19? Do they have new roles and responsibilities? Well, my understanding with uh, fire departments throughout Los Angeles is they are adapting to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic by providing uh, PPEs for first responders for fire and EMS calls. For example, they are uh, donning face pieces or the face masks, such as the N95, goggles and shields and gowns when they have potential um, COVID-19 patients. Now, in, in addition to that is the equipment. Fire department has always been very conscientious about cleaning their equipment. After an EMS call, the ambulances are cleaned at the ER. Uh, fire equipment is clean after a fire incident. And what they've done is they've gone beyond that. Uh, fire stations are cleaned every day. Uh, we all know that. However, they ta they've taken extra measures to ensure that everything is disinfected and cleaned because they still eat there at the fire station. So there are some changes within the fire organization because of the COVID-19. In addition to that, I was just going to add the... Um, previous employer that I used to work for, the LA City Fire Department, they uh, currently are in a pilot program and it's called the telemedicine interaction with patients. So there at the dispatch center, they'll get 911 calls. And depending on the type of call, you may have a nurse practitioner, a physician's assistant, or even a physician there at the dispatch center and interacting uh, via FaceTime. And what that does is it helps alleviate some of the ERs that were saturated a couple of months ago with patients where they could take care of things where they wouldn't bring a patient when the ER, for example, LA County was inundated with different with COVID-19 patients. So there has been some changes because of the COVID-19 pandemic that is affecting not only the city of Los Angeles, but throughout the world. We're entering prime wildfire season. How will the pandemic affect the response to wildfires? What I call the contemporary fire department has um, always worn several hats. When I started 33 years ago, now 35 years ago, you know, firefighters would respond to structure fires, medical calls, and any 911 calls that would come out. But I could add that in the 33 plus years, the fire service has really changed, and I call it a, a, a public safety organization that wears several different hats, such as uh, responding to structure fires, wildland fires, medical calls, and natural disasters. For example, earthquakes, hillside collapses, debris flow, river rescues, urban search and rescue, uh, hiker incidents, and active shooter. And there could be more incidents they, they respond to, but in regards to wildland fires, fire organizations throughout the country, and especially the West Coast in Los Angeles or California, they're always preparing for wildland fires. And in regards to wildland fires, my previous employer, you know, LA Fire Department, annually they would prepare for brush fires. Even though it's 24-7, 12 months a year now, it's just not seasonal. So they're always prepared. So when you look at the pandemic, and how it affects an organization. I know speaking to some firefighters that are still on the job, um, they know it's fire season all year round and they continue to train. They train on 
operations, strategy and tactics, mutual aid, continuity of operation. Um, they're always preparing. But I think with the um, pandemic, one unique situation, if I were still there, would be evacuation. And I did see a media uh, news a few weeks ago where one of the chiefs talked about preparing for evacuation because of the physical distancing that occurs now is how do you put in um, 100, 200 people into a gym? So they're now looking at physical distancing, ensuring that um, there is safety among the people that are being evacuated from their homes and also protecting the homes that are out there. So as a retired firefighter, I am proud that they continue to uh, anticipate emergencies or potential emergencies that probably will occur. So in regards to wildland fires, I'm very proud that they're, that they're continuing to train and prepare because it is getting hot. I believe it was over 100 degrees where I live right now in Los Angeles. So um, they are aware. You just earned your doctorate in education at USC for which you wrote your thesis on stress in the fire service. A lot of first responders are currently experiencing heightened stress. Can you apply some of your findings to the COVID-19 pandemic and tell us a bit more about what we're currently seeing? Yes, I just, I just did finish my doctorate at USC at the University of Southern California, and I received my doctorate in education at Rossier School of Education. My research dissertation uh, is on stress in the fire service, and I looked at a lot of different topics. And when I spoke to my professors, they said, pick a topic that would be instrumental, not only with you, but perhaps the world community. And four years ago, when I was pondering the idea of what topic to speak about or write about and research about, um, stress in the fire service kept coming up. I thought about leadership. I'm an advocate of leadership. But stress in the fire service was something that just I just can't come in back to. So I decided to pick that topic. But what was instrumental, or I wouldn't say instrumental, but a, a crossroads for me to pick that topic was... Um, some of the experiences that I had. In 1991, I was a young, what they call an apparatus operator, and I responded to um, a crash at LAX where the U.S. airplane collided with another airplane. And I was young. I probably had six or seven years on the job responding, and I still vividly remember this. Driving into 24, 24 left, it was dark, and I could see things on the runway. Obviously the runway was closed, but what it was was things that were burning or that I, led, that I later found out was just unfortunately um, people. And that was the beginning of my introduction to stress management within the organization. And with that, I remember a couple days later the uh, clinician or the psychologist from the uh, from the fire department came and we sat in what we called the recreation or the conference room and we wanted to debrief. But it was a time, you know, where, and I'm sure even now, you wouldn't really talk about it. You know, we just listened to him, but almost ignored him. Uh, not out of disrespect because he was a psychologist, because the culture is very different. You hear about it, and especially during my research, I would interview people, firefighters, and I would do research on lit review. And there's a sign of weakness when you expose your, your true feelings. So uh, I decided to, to pick stress in the fire service. And in 1998, uh, working in Hollywood, again, as an apparatus operator, driving the fire truck, Yahoo, um, responded to a helicopter crash in Griffith Park. And to um, carry your friend out of a helicopter, no longer, you know, there, is something you always think about. So after 30 years of compounded, and, and you know, I think about it, but I'm okay, is um, I thought stress in the fire service was a topic that needed to be brought up and to the forefront. So people understand it's okay to talk about stress. And it may not be an incident. It may not be things that, um, you know, that affect 
everybody, but at least a resource that's available for firefighters. So my topic, stress in the fire service, was what I decided to uh, endeavor into, and I felt that I felt that it was important because maybe somebody down the road, years from now, or maybe next week, will read and go, you know what? That's interesting. The recommendations. Uh, that's how I felt, you know, but I never expressed it. So from an academic standpoint, I felt good about my research. And hopefully it'll help the world community at some point. I'm sure it will help many people. Do you think that some of the findings that you had would be applicable to the stress that first responders are currently experiencing whilst responding to COVID? Through my own personal experience, having felt these feelings of anxiety or stress and keeping it inside... I'm sure there's a parallel to COVID-19 because the feeling of anxiety or stress is something is triggered differently by each individual. And it really depends on how that person or that individual copes with that stress or anxiety. And for me, as a a researcher of stress in the fire service, from an educational standpoint, there is a parallel between COVID-19 and everything else a firefighter may experience, the COVID-19 may be a trigger from something that occurred prior to you know, COVID-19, from an incident or transporting a baby that was ill because they may have had a baby the week before. So those are the you know, cognitive or emotional um, feelings that uh, firefighters have I can't speak for everybody, but from my experience um, and, and going doing the research, I found that a lot of the stories that I listened to when I interviewed 20 firefighters, that there is similarities. And the similarity is what you mentioned, the heightened stress. It does exist. So through education, my hope as, as a doctor of education is that one day, Organizations will start to educate and train uh, the firefighters within their organization to know that uh, these are normalcies in regards to human behavior and cognitive thoughts that occur. And everyone deals with it differently and not everybody needs the assistance, but at least let them know that resources are available. What are some ways employers can improve mental health for their employees? Well, if I were to go back on regarding my my research, my study examined um, the knowledge, the motivation, the organizational needs and assets associated to stress in the fire service. And my recommendations after research and data collection was to increase the positive perception of stress within the organization that will uh, position the organization towards what I call a progressive change. Now, these findings were based on the need to, for me to design and implement an innovative stress education program and provide a sustainable, what I call a cultural change to reduce stress in the fire service. And when I talk about reducing stress through cultural change is the mentality that sharing your feelings is a sign of weakness. And through data collection or uh, research findings, um, researchers have found, you know, that firefighters in the fire service feel that expressing your emotions is a sign of weakness. And I can't speak for any other occupation. I can speak for myself and my experience after 33 years is um, there's a feeling of macho culture that is important to use as a mask uh, amongst your peers. And I'm not saying that, you know, we should all just get around a campfire and just hug each other because I can't see the fire service doing that. Because when someone calls 911, we are the ones that are supposed to fix the problem. So we don't have problems. And I'm just sharing perhaps my feelings. But I can tell you there are some interviews that were kind of really kind of brought a light to me. 
and I, I brought one thing where I want to share. Uh, one of the participants stated, it's a matter of time before you have to deal with stress. And this is where firefighters will have issues because firefighters don't know how to manage and handle stress. Another interview participant stated that the firefighter deaths I experienced, I was not prepared for. And I'll share one more here is um, an interview from another participant is, quote, the scary part was I could hear and feel the gunman getting closer to the fire engine. I could hear the concussion of the gun firing. He was explaining about a firefighter when he was at some fire company, they responded to a bank robbery and the gunmen were outside the bank shooting and they had to die for cover. And he was sheltering behind, I don't know if it was the fire engine motor or the duels, but he could hear the concussion. And that is something that person shared with me. And I thought, wow, that is, uh, I wouldn't say profound, but that is something that obviously he's thought about all this time. So everyone I spoke to had a story about something that occurred, you know, and uh, it was interesting. So there was commonality in regards to, does the fire service have stress? Well, uh, after, you know, listening to these interviews, uh, there was affirmation in my thoughts that stress does exist. Uh, I only knew going into my research that stress is something that I knew existed. You know, I dealt with it differently. But you talk about uh, COVID-19 and coping skills is very important. But even with that, coping skills, I found out, were self-taught by many of these firefighters. And they reached out to professionals themselves or they did some reading and they dealt with it themselves. So education from an organizational standpoint is important for me in regards to as an educator uh, for firefighters in the future. And there is definitely a parallel between COVID-19 and what firefighters have faced or will continue to face in their profession. You saw friends and colleagues pass away now, every death is different, especially in today's circumstances where a lot of people are dying alone in the hospital and every person grieves differently. But what are some tips that you could share about how you personally dealt with grief? My personal management of stress was physical fitness and camaraderie, and that runs as a high note within the fire organization from the time I was there is um, joking around, you know, talking to your peers. Uh, you may go to an incident that was tr traumatic, but you'll come back and sometimes, um, you know, you just continue with what you were doing before you left. You know, you may be sanding a ladder or uh, picking up some hose or equipment and cleaning. You go out, you take care of business, you come back and, you know, but the camaraderie was important. And I, I truly believe that camaraderie and peer support is important and continues to be important. I can tell you one thing, a couple of weeks ago, LA Fire had a tragic fire uh, in the downtown area toy district on Boyd Street. And uh, I talk about organizations, how important the leader is. Uh, there was an interview by the fire chief, uh, Ralph Terrazas, and at the end, he mentioned how recovery would take months, and I'm paraphrasing, but mental wellness is important. And as a um, educator and a doctor of education, I think to hear that was fantastic because now I see a leader of one of the largest organizations in the world, if not the country, um, talked about mental wellness so it wasn't just the physical recovery from the burns, but it's the mental wellness in the recovery that they're gonna to have to face in the upcoming months. But I could see that the camaraderie again and the teamwork concept of, in the fire service is gonna be important for coping and um, assuring that you know, their colleagues, you know, as a retiree watching from the outside in, it's different now. But every day I pray 
that they recover not only physically, but mentally. And when I heard that from the fire chief, I had to give him a thumbs up. Yeah, that, that's really great. And I think what you said about camaraderie, um, especially in the in the work environment, is also going to be key as more and more people are going to return to work and potentially walking by a desk that is now empty because the person who used to sit there passed away from COVID. So that will be very interesting to to observe how em- employers are, are managing that. Yeah, I think it's imp- interesting you bring that up because grieving is important, you know, for, for a loss of anybody. And whether it's the fire service or a family member, having conversations with a couple of people in the last three or four weeks, uh, grieving was critical. Uh, I had a friend uh, that had a... Um, father, he's a grandfather also, uh, at the hospital. And obviously, they couldn't go in there and see him. But I could tell you the first responder or the nurse or the physician was able to take the phone and FaceTime with the family. So the comment I got from the, uh, the friend is, at least we were able to see him. And that's a, uh, a process of grieving. Um, the other day, same thing, another conversation with uh, another fire, uh, firefighter. You know, uh, being able to interact FaceTime because the nurse was kind enough to take the phone. It helped with that person's grieving, you know, that at least they were able to talk, you know, and see. So that's just kind of the experience that I've had in the last couple of weeks, just through conversation. Glenn, who is one of your COVID-19 heroes? Oh, COVID heroes. (laughs) First responders, well, of course, you know, for me, firefighters, the paramedics, law enforcement, nurses, doctors, military personnel, essential workers, the grocery, the store workers, the administrators, the delivery personnel, you know, these restaurant workers, these are all the people that I've seen in the last three months, and I thank them. But there's probably, as I think about this, if I were to identify one, if not a group, I would say the families of the first responders. And the reason I say that is, um, to me, they're heroes. They go out, you know, all of these people. They go out, they go to the ER, they go to the fire station, go to the police station, they go to UPS, FedEx. But the family has to know, and the deep back back part of their mind is, they're going to come back and are going to contract it back in the house. And a lot of these families... And we all have friends, probably kids, if not elderly, that live with them. You know, am I bringing this uh, COVID-19 back to the house? And I know the employers are taking every precautionary measure to protect the employees. But there's always that slight chance because we've never seen anything like this, right? Since 1918, the Spanish pandemic, over 100 years ago. And hopefully we'll never see this again uh, once we find a a vaccine and treatment to to cure this COVID-19. However, to answer your question, um, the families of the first responders are my heroes. And I thank them very much for what they do every day. And I echo your thoughts. Glenn, thank you so very much for your time here with me today and for sharing about the fire service and all of their great contributions throughout COVID and obviously also outside of COVID. Glenn, thank you so very much. Well, Lorraine, it was a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for inviting me to your COVID-19. I know your program, your podcast is very important for a lot of your listeners. And I hope uh, through this podcast that we had today Somebody will learn something and uh, share something. And I really appreciate your time you've given me to express my thoughts in regarding COVID-19 and the fire service. I would like to close off this episode by thanking Glenn for his 33 years of service with the LA City Fire Department and his new endeavor, breaking the stigma associated with mental health and ensuring that mental well-being becomes a priority across the fire service. And of course, many thanks to all active firefighters currently playing an important role in responding to COVID-19 needs, as well as all other urgent 911 calls, including upcoming wildfires. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. 
feel free to leave a review or rating of the show on your app or follow it on social media. Just follow the links in the episode description. Stay well, stay healthy. Until next time, I'm your host, Lorraine Schneider.